Welcome back everyone. We are here in World 2 because we need to talk about one of the hardest levels in Super Mario Bros. 3. If you have ever seen this level, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. This easy ass, super fair, awesome, easy level. You don't do anything, you run around, you jump from block to block. There's only one pit at the start where you can die. Maybe you can go in the quicksand, you can die. So, what am I talking about? Why is this level so hard? Look at it. I just didn't even do anything and we were able to beat it. Well, the actual level itself is not that difficult. But from a speedrunner's point of view, this level is very, very difficult. And without going into too crazy detail, just the natural strategy that you would most likely see in Mario 3 speedruns is also still really difficult. We're gonna throw it back just a little bit and we're gonna focus on a couple things with the normal strategy, what you're most likely to see in a speedrun. Step number one is you're most likely gonna see a slide strat here and the runner is gonna land on this brown block right here. So instantly, it's already difficult because if you miss jumping off of this brown block, you will definitely run right into the pit and you will die. So right away, it's already difficult. Now, what makes it even more difficult, that brown block jump, is that when you slide on this hill, if you slide all the way to the tippy toe far edge like this, you're gonna have a lot of speed built up, which means it's very possible for you to get so much speed that you actually jump over the block. You don't wanna jump over the block because number one, you don't wanna push it so far because you'll get so close to falling in the sand. You just got out of world one, you're celebrating, you finally got your 331, you're in the green, and you fall and you drop to the sand. And you lose, look at it, you lose all this time. And I'm sure you guys have seen me do it, it's the worst. So you want to slide, and like I said, it is possible to jump all the way over the brown block. So that's really difficult, because when that happens, you're probably not expecting it, probably gonna die. The other thing that makes this difficult is that when you're sliding with speed, you're going really fast. And I'm gonna actually show you on the bottom left corner, uh, I guess you want to call it the HUD, uh, where it shows all my information. I got a timer, but you can also see the number on the left of the timer. It says 40 right now, now it says zero. And now it says 40 again, 37, 40. That's Mario's speed, okay? But when I slide, you can see the number increases all the way up to 52. And when I land on the ground like that, did you see how I was running uphill? It was decreasing. The speed that you build on the ground with P-meter counteracts with your slide speed because the game wants to build P-speed over sliding speed. So, when you slide on the ground and you build as much speed as you can, more than base speed, every time you land on the ground, it's gonna wanna bring you back to base speed to try and build the P speed. It's really annoying. So the way to avoid that is to do single frame jumps. If you jump on the first frame, you won't decrease any speed. And that's what a lot of runners try and do. We try and preserve as much sliding speed as we can. So if you watch me do it, I'm gonna try my best and watch, I'm gonna miss an input fall, fall in the water, it's gonna be the worst. But we're definitely gonna get over speed 40. There we go, we got 51. See how it's decreasing every jump? It's going down slowly. All right, so we're still one knot above 40. So that was still faster than if I just ran, ran through the whole level like this. If I just ran with base speed, you see how I have 40? If I just run with base speed like this, it's obviously not gonna be as fast. So we do wanna do the sliding and that's the tricky part. The only way to keep that extra speed is to jump as soon as you land and that will cause a lot of troubles. See it, if I jump too early, I would have fallen there. If I slide here and I go, again, I, I, I didn't even mean to do that. All right, I jump, I jump, let's say I miss my jump here. Great, it runs over, right? So that's something that just adds the little bit of extra difficulty. It's slower if you don't slide, but if you do slide, it actually ends up being harder. So the goal is to slide, get as much speed as you can, and then most of the time, runners kind of run out of steam halfway through the level. I wanna say either this jump, most runners will run a little bit because if you're going too fast, it's scary, but if you're going too slow, you might as well just get back to base speed. Or if not that jump, runners will most likely land here and then run straight and go back to base speed again. It's, it's very common for you to get your speed back to 40 at some point around this area. Um, if, you get, if you can get off, you know, three or four jumps with the big slide speed, that's good. Uh, 291, 292 into the pipe in this level, perfectly fine. But honestly, when it comes to the hardest levels in this game, that, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about something completely different. There has been about a few weeks now where a lot of you have probably seen me actually get P-speed in this level 
without doing the sliding and without taking damage. It's been known in my previous video when I talked about Fast 7-2 how you can take damage and your P meter is still rolling. As an example, if I run into this Goomba, I can build P speed a little bit easier than normal. You see how I was able to build P speed right there? Let me just do it a couple times, give you guys a good good example here. You see how I'm, I'm building P speed. It's, it's not much of a trouble. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just taking damage and it just so happens that it builds for me. Well, like I mentioned before, if I go into the level, I can't build P speed by just jumping. It doesn't, you see how it didn't work? Something about taking damage allows me to get P meter. Like, look at it, it's, it's not even close. I'm not even, you're not even hearing the chime of the P meter go. I can't, I'm not even close. Like, I just can't do it. It's really annoying. I mean, I can do it right here. Woo, I get it backwards. But we don't want to do that. But there is a strategy, okay? There is a forbidden strategy in this level. And I call it Fast 2-2. The forbidden strategy. What it involves is an extremely, extremely precise jump that I like to do right as Mario's feet almost pass this line. On this tree right here, this bush, you need Mario's feet to just kind of pass it. And what you want to do is you want to do a full big jump. And as soon as Mario passes this arc right here, the corner, the corner of the hill and the flat, the corner of the hill and the flat, that's when you want to get your single frame fire shot. That's right. This is almost a pixel perfect, frame perfect shot. For some reason, there's something about the way you let go of the B button and repress it. Somehow, I don't even understand what it is because without doing that, if I don't do it, for some reason, I can't build it here. It just... It just doesn't work. I, I have no idea. It's like a this perfect little stars align, mysterious forbidden P-Speed strategy that works barely ever. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an example of what this looks like. We're gonna wanna line up our foot with the bush. We're gonna wanna do a single frame shot right at the crease. And then it's gonna hit the Goomba and it's gonna allow us to build our P-Speed right at the end of the ledge. Let's do it. As you can see, I managed to build P-Speed. Ridiculous. Because as we just saw, you can't even build it without the Goomba. You would think, naturally, not shooting the Goomba and just being able to run, not even letting go of B, would help you get it. But it doesn't. It doesn't. And you want to know why that is? And I'm convinced of this. I'm so convinced of this that I I'm not even going to tass it to confirm it. Is that this is almost sub-pixel dependent. That's right. Just like clips in 7-1, just like clips in 7-6, you can't clip into the wall without the right subpixel, and I'm pretty sure this same thing applies. The reason I'm so sure is because when I get certain subpixels, I can't do the P-Speed, I can't do it. Subpixels zero to I wanna say about 10 or 11, I can get it, I can do my strategy, it works. I can get it every time. I'm on a subpixel of five right now, if you look at my coin count, my coin count right now is showing my subpixels. As you can see, my subpixels are, are changing. If I start the level with subpixel five, which is what I started in my example, I was able to get it. So this trick is actually requiring a subpixel manipulation out of this world. You might be asking, well, how the heck do you do a subpixel manipulation in this? Well, in world one airship, you wanna beat the boss and then much like world six airship, before you grab the wand, you wanna move one pixel to the right. So we're gonna move one pixel to the right. As you can see, I need to, I need to pass over subpixel 15. Let me just show you one more time. I'm on subpixel 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. My next one is gonna roll over. I'm gonna move one pixel, so just like that. I'm gonna exit the level. Now, theoretically, this would be fine in practice. If I did this on the airship, everything would be fine. So what I want to do, and I don't know why this works so consistently. This is the most messed up, forbidden, manipulation, P-Speed strategy, I swear, in the entire game. For some reason, in 2-1, when you do your natural wall rub at the start of the level, you, you maintain the same subpixels. I don't know why. It's extremely consistent, so watch. If I start with a subpixel of zero, and I rub this wall, now that I have P-Speed, my... You can see my subpixels are oscillating between subpixel value 13 and five.
Okay? That's when I start this level with subpixel zero. And what do you know? I'm oscillating between subpixel 13 and five. Why? I, I have no idea. How does that work? Okay? The only reason subpixels work for seven, one, and seven, six is because you start the level and you hold forward right into the wall. Nothing stops, nothing gets in your way. I don't know what it is. Let's do it again. Right here, rub the wall. Look at that. Subpixels 13 and five. What a surprise. So that is insanely consistent. So in my mind, for 2-2, two, two, I'm like, okay, I need either subpixels sub -pixels zero to 10 will give me the P-speed, sure. Let's just use that as an example. All right, so if I start this level with a subpixel of zero, I always get the oscillating, right? between 13 and five, and it's like, oh crap, well now what do I do? Um, I don't wanna get subpixel 13, so I need to find a guaranteed method. Well, guess what? For some reason, rubbing up against the purple wall in 2-1, also extremely consistent for subpixel keeping. Look at this, in five, and then when I rub this wall, I'm on oscillating 12 and four. Let's go ahead and do that again. Let's see if that's consistent for some scary, weird reason. Oh look, 13 and five. I haven't not got 13 and five. Oh look, rub the wall. Look at that, 12 and four. I don't know why it works. Okay, now this is going to give me a subpixel of four. I already know this because I've tested it. And we know that subpixels zero to 10 work with getting P-speed in two, two. I have no idea why 2-1 is so consistent with subpixel manipulation. You want to know what's even more generous about all this? Is that if you do manage to get a subpixel 0, and you got your subpixels to work here, you got 13 and 5, and then you get your 14 and 12, if somehow rubbing the purple wall doesn't work out for you, like, I let go a button, so I got 9 and 1 there, and that, that's only because I let go to, like, press pause and talk. But Let's just say theoretically this didn't work out for you. Well, you can do one more thing to change your subpixels and you can run off this ledge right here. Look at that. It just changed to zero and eight. I got a subpixel of eight. Zero and eight both work. So regardless, I'm safe. So I don't get it. I don't get it. It just works. It just wants, the game wants you to do 2-2 P-Speed. But the issue behind 2-2 P-Speed is simply the execution. The subpixel manipulation, the movement into one, that's all super easy. Almost anyone can do it as long as you don't move around too much. It's the execution, the, the frame perfect shot right on the bush. It's like, it's like one pixel past Mario's toe on the tree. It's like, if you're anywhere else other than this, it won't work. I don't know if this is the exact pixel because I'm used to seeing it when I'm moving. I'm used to seeing like the moving animation. So like I can, I can visually see like him actually stepping over the bush, not standing still on the bush. But we're gonna go ahead and do it one more time so you guys can get a good look at it. We're gonna slow it down just so you can see exactly what's happening. And if you want to look while I'm slowing it down, if you look in the bottom right corner, you see those two squares going beside the two right there. That's actually my input display. So this is my B button and this is my jump button. And these are my arrows. And you can actually see that I'm, you know, I'm doing a very, very fast fire shot. There's two, we got two in a row. A lot of you are wondering, well, how much time does this save? Like, how important is this? If you get this versus a semi-optimal slide strat. Remember how I said about halfway through the slide strat, people start to slow down and go back to base speed. If you do that, this P-Speed strategy is easily two seconds faster. It's really, really fast. And if you don't keep full slide speed, then the P-Speed strategy is just getting faster and faster and faster. If you do manage to miss it, and you bonk this, you're gonna, it's possible that you're well over a second lost already from a strategy that would be slower. You'd better off just going for the slide strat rather than taking the second. This is a very risky strategy. Um, this is mostly for top runners, but you have a little bit of a tutorial and maybe we can generalize this level and make it more common. It's always going to be extremely difficult to execute and I have faith in a lot of runners and I want to see a lot of people practicing and play with it 
I don't expect to see it in a lot of people's runs super fast, but it's something that most Mario 3 runners have known about for a very long time, but it's super risky with an unfortunate backhand to it, where if you miss it, it's it's so bad for your runs. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my little tutorial on 2-2p speed. We can call it fast 2-2 if you want. Uh, regardless, I find this to be one of the hardest P-Speed strategies in the game, making this one of the hardest levels in the game to speedrun. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. And let me know if you learned something. Thank you everyone for watching, and woo! See you later.